Alright then everyone, hello and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So in this episode I'm going to be, well, the first thing I'll be doing is taking on the outsider guy in the Coliseum. He's weak to instant death, but he's still likely to kill me before I get it off. So yeah, that's a death. But thankfully I've got a safe state right at the start of the segment. It's not really doing anything illegal, it's just making my restarts really fast. It doesn't help me predict anything or anything like that, and it's right where I could make a regular save anyway, so it's not like I'm doing anything shady there or anything. And I'm dead again. He counters with shurikens, and those are instant death, so I pretty much just gotta restart until I don't see that. Got a wall ring on to prevent flare. His physical attack, because he's... This enemy is actually a surprisingly low level for a Kepkis Tower enemy because he's, uh... Otherwise his throw would be incredibly overpowered. Which means that his physical attacks do almost no damage. In fact, I can... Even my unprepared shadow can survive him fairly easily, so... Pretty much just a luck fest until I get that instant death proc before he uh, shurikens me in the face. Theoretically, it should be one out of four, but haven't been getting that good luck so far. There's always a possibility that he'll use something like ruin on me, which is instant death, right at the start of the fight, but. There's that reflect ring coming in handy again. Now let's see if uh, Shadow can capitalize on that. Nice. And so I have my snow muffler, so that's the first part of the segment out of the way. Good work, Shadow. You're already a good addition to the team, apparently. And mess that up again. Must have already been on save when I made that save state. See, I'm too early for that. I've still got more stuff I want to do. Alright then, everyone. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So, uh, this mini-sode, or perhaps episode, I'm not sure exactly how I want to break this up yet. I'm going to make it all the way to that save point at the top of, uh, the snow fields there. Maybe I'll run into Ice Dragon on the way, maybe not, I'm not sure. So, that'll be fun. I can I can defeat Ice Dragon right now, with the setup I have at this moment. Oh, I never showed it. Well, that's a shame, I guess, for you. I'm on Banish, obviously, that's a... That, that's a given, considering its ridiculous protective qualities against random encounters in this game. Who's the slowpoke this time? Alright. Let's meet it through that encounter. Still got a long way to walk upwards, though. Narsh is a pretty big place, not that I'm going through most of it right now. I'll have to come back into Narsh a couple more times. Once later to get Mog. I can't get him now, as much as that Moogle Charm would be nice, because he'll affect my level average and, uh, make it so that characters will start joining at level 7, which isn't good. Although, one thing about Lock leveling up to 7 against the IAF, as much as it really doesn't help me with, uh, anything else in the World of Ruin, it does mean that I can go through the Phoenix Cave with the Moogle Charm, which will help a lot. And since I'm never using lock at all, I don't feel guilty at all about doing it, so yay. It's helped twice so far. It hasn't made the run worse in any way. Alright, so I'm probably at the top, right? Not now. Let's 
As long as I don't make a mistake or get too much fire 2 to the face, I should be good in this segment. Nope, there was uh, nothing there. Now I can go left and up. And nothing there either, so I can pretty much anticipate a battle this time around. Prob possibly even two. Right up. Oh, uh, took one step and... So, Gaum now has that oh-so-awesome snow muffler on. But due to his, uh, let's say, lackluster <laughs> shield selection, he isn't yet able to get a perfect defense setup. But I can get him close by shoving the mithril glove and the white cape on him. It's not super uber close, though. He still takes a decent amount of damage, so I have to be careful somewhat. Aw, oh, rats. Well, someone's dead. I'm going right next. Yeah, it was, uh... Oh, shoot. I, uh, switched a lot of my party order around. That would be... Edgar died. Dang it. I don't... I didn't want Edgar to die. He's the last one I wanted to hit, get hit by that fire, too. Because I absolutely need him to get a turn off against the, uh... Ice Dragon. Well, not absolutely need, but this will take a long time if he doesn't. Alright, so did I make it to, to the uh, box? I think I did, probably, because I'm not receiving any more battles. So the box is easy. This is actually the reason why I didn't use this strat earlier, but this is actually a lot easier than I thought, because I'm just at the right side of the box and I have to go around it. Clockwise. Down. Left. Left. Up. Up. Right. So now I'm at the top side of the box. Now I take one step up and go through the door. Easy as pie. Better than running off all the other direction and having to deal with a couple more battle. Well, maybe one more battle. <laughs> all the way to the right. All the way to the bottom. I'm not sure if Agar can tank a hit from the Ice Dragon. I'm not. I don't think he can. His defense is fairly high, but I don't think so high as to. Oh wow! No battle there either. That almost makes me worried. <laughs> Left. Still not super far into this segment, nor is it super long to begin with, so... Up. Well, that tells me nothing. I could have bought Warp Stones or sor sto Smoke Bombs, but I guess I didn't. Well, someone got wheeled. Oh, that person got hit. But it might have been Gao, because they lived. And Gao can probably take a fire too, with his relatively high magic defense, plus his halving of fire, plus his high HP to boot. Hopefully, we shouldn't be seeing any more of those guys either. But it's certainly a possibility. I didn't get fire too. I only got the only character who got fire tuned in my test run was Setzer, the most worthless character on the team right now. So he's not even necessarily there for any particular reason. He's just there. One, two. He's just the character I happened to have in my party at the time. Left. So now I exit the store, and now I'll know that I'm in the right place by the fact that the battles have changed to something less threatening. 
So now I take one step to the right. Right. Down. Down. Now I should be lined up with the bridge. Let's go. Battle. That's a decent sign. I didn't get any indication from that battle of what's going on, but that'll have to be good enough. I still think I did it correctly because uh, that battle was far enough after I started walking that most places in the mine are pretty cramped, left to right. Not up to down so much, but up one, left one, all the way up to the top. Yeah, it's definitely starting to feel like I'm following the correct path. So let's hope I can continue that streak. Well, at least someone appears to still be on Vanish. Oh, I have another character. I thought that was all of them. So I've reached the top of this thing. Now, hopefully I won't get another encounter with the... Fire 2 spewing Meg Rotors in the mines. Why did they name four enemies the same thing anyway? <laughs> That's just silly seeming. Were they just that desperate for names there? Alright, so I think I made it to the, uh, the gap here. One. Two, right up. All right, that's probably far enough. So I can expect to make it to this random uh, face of the cliff. Now the ice dragon starts somewhere-ish towards the top. So I have a ways to go before there's any chance of me fighting him. Left one, all the way up. Got a battle before the screen transition even happened. Just hitting my one character still on Vanish, either Seven or Setzer. I'm assuming. So now I should be in the snowfield. Let's uh, go in my menu quickly before I uh, mess this up and get into an unexpected encounter. As expected, Gao took some damage, so left. And now I just go up and right for a long time until I either hit the Ice Dragon or I hit the uh, top right corner. As I said before, I don't need to miss the Ice Dragon here. If I get him here, I just won't need to make another mini-segment. This is just a random. <laughs> no need to panic. Uh, it's even a side attack. Bonus. It's like walking through a minefield. It's another random. <laughs> it's like playing the lottery here. because normally I know where all the boss fights are, but in this case it's sort of like, hmm, this might be a boss fight or it might not be a boss fight. Let's uh, go back into my menu. Make sure everyone's in tip-top condition still. I'm not paying too much attention to my... Uh, up and right here, so I'm really hoping I didn't just wander off into a uh, corner. That would be the true disaster of a segment. Alright, doesn't appear that I'm getting any more fights, so I've probably made it to the top right corner here. Which means I better stop talking and move. Left. 
Alright, so now I reached the left side. Probably. Unless I got caught in the corner somewhere. Alright, let's see if I make it to the safe point. Safe too. All right, so let's see what my team's doing. Setzer and Nightgar still have Vanish. Sabin and Gao do not, but I do not need. Oh, yeah, I messed up my uh, expectations of the uh, order they were in because I, like I said, I shifted them around and messed up. Let's save, and that'll cap off the mini sode. But I'm gonna need another one to take out that Ice Dragon. Alright, so as you may have noticed, we're starting on the title screen this time. That's because I want to get down there as quickly as possible before the Ice Dragon gets away. <laughs> oh, wait. One more button press. One. Two. I said two. Hopefully I don't get Osmos to here. That'll mess with my setup. I don't need to worry about some shenanigans going on because if Edgar just gets killed now, it's not really going to be an issue with uh, restarting because I won't have to go all the way down. Well, I guess. All right, so there we go. Found him really quickly. That was lucky. All right, so this is oh shoot, this is either Edgar or Sabin. Hopefully Edgar doesn't get frozen by that, or this run's probably going to be ended. Bioblaster's one to the right. Nice! Oops. No, no, no. Uh, this is Gauss. I don't want to just willy-nilly attack. That would be a run ender, too. Actually, not so much since the poison is the majority of the damage, but it would be a pain in the butt. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's my bullies that I'm looking for. Setzer, you can uh, hit stuff or something like that. Alright, so with Gao having the snow muffler and nearly perfect defense, he should be able to wall the physical attacks enough that the. Uh, that the ice attacks will be able to heal him back to full before he dies. And even if he gets frozen, there will be still tons of damage coming along from the poison, so... Well, Surge just wiped the party, so... Time to put the controller down and wait for Gao to do his thing. I just hope there aren't too many punches in a row. I'm not sure he might also be able to counterattack with punch moves, so... Dang it. He does about 40 damage every time. At this high defense, that Mithril Glove actually uh, cuts damage by more than a third. It's actually kind of hilarious. <laughs> so he'd be taking over 60 damage without that thing, and this would take. This would be a lot more dangerous. Unfortunately, Nor N Cross doesn't heal him, so. Nice, there we go. That's a heal. And as that poison builds, it'll be doing more and more damage, so it'll get up to nearly 2,000 by the time it's at full strength. And since he only has 24,000-ish HP, that's one twelfth of his HP every single time that it hits him. So even if Gao does absolutely nothing, those poison ticks will end the battle in at least a reasonably short amount of time. And it appears that Gauss about to start doing nothing because I think he just got frozen. Whatever, that's kind of the whole point of the poison. It's why I really, really wanted Edgar to use him, because otherwise this battle will take ages. The Ice Dragon has an annoying tendency to use End Cross right as Gao gets off the frozen status. So. You can just be stunlocked for quite a while, and that 1,000 damage isn't doing a whole lot. There 
There we go. Absolute zero. Gauss back up full. We're not in the danger zone anymore. Gao can take seven attacks. I can't stick the Green Beret on him, because that'll ruin his defense at this point. With that on, the guy would be doing, like, 100 damage, so no HP bonus here. Well, uh, that might have done something, or it might not have done something. I mean, I guess that statement covers every possible possibility in every <laughs> single case ever, but... Oh, Gao punched to the left side. He's anti-communist, I suppose. Gao is a... Gao is a bastion of... fascism. Why did he did make the normal... I guess he must have died of poison right after that blaze. Something? It's weird, I don't know. Seven dragons left. <laughs> Most of the dragons are chumps to begin with, let's be honest here. I could have even berserked that guy, but I was like, nah, I'm just gonna play it through. I'd prefer... That boss is easy enough as it is that I don't feel like there's really a need to throw the berserk status on him and make the fight even dumber. To the save point, that took five minutes. Alright, see you next time.